As a worship leader, have you ever wondered what to say between songs? It's a potential moment of extreme awkwardness, but today we're going to talk about some ideas that will hopefully give you some food for thought. But first, let's cue that intro. Hey everybody, this is Troy from WorshipAtmosphere.com and today we're going to talk about what to say between songs when you're leading worship. Now, before we've talked about what to say before your worship service starts, and I'll link that video right up here. Go check it out later. You know, when you're going from one song to another, you have a, a potential for some awkwardness, some dead silence, what do you say, what do you do, and let me say this, it may, it may depend on your your church or congregation how you're leading worship if you're using multi tracks like we do at Cornerstone Church then one song ends there's you know a brief pause and then the next song begins and uh, to fill that gap I'll say some things and, and I'll worship and we'll talk about some some of the things that I do but then we move into the next song and, and we proceed uh, forward but if you have a house band, or if it's you on keyboard or guitar, then your situation may vary. What happens there is up to you. But these are just some ideas on what you can say between songs to avoid that potential awkwardness. So first on the list is worship. Yes, that's right, what a novel idea. Let's worship the Lord of all creation when we're going from one song to the next. As one song is ending, and you're bridging or there's a, a brief pause until the next song picks up, let's worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and uh, glorify His name because that's, that's what we're here to do anyways, right? We're here to, to worship God Almighty and so we should, yes, we should worship Him. Uh, you know, we want the worship to be genuine. You want it to be authentic. Paul Balash says that um, in, in his uh, Worship Leader training series, that your worship should be an extension of what you do in your private time. It should be an overflow of what you do naturally when you're not leading worship in front of a crowd of people. So let that come out, let that natural worship come out and praise the Lord, not just for show, but honest, uh, honest and genuine worship. That's really critical and that's going to encourage others and help create that, that atmosphere of worship. So number one, worship. Number two is to encourage them. Give them encouragement. Encourage them to worship the Lord, to lift their hands, to uh, raise their voices, shout His name, do something along those lines as long as it stays positive. Um, there, there's an opportunity there to uh, start saying things that maybe aren't quite so uplifting, they're not so positive. If you start pointing fingers and repent, repent, repent of your sin, that probably won't garner a whole lot of positive response. Uh, in fact, they'll probably shut down and, and kill your worship atmosphere. But what I'm trying to say is sometimes people just need to be told what to do. And I'm not saying to, to beg them or command or because they probably won't do it. There may be a few that will. But uh, you know, maybe if it's just, you know, shout amen, shout his name, give glory to God, just encourage them to worship and uh, let loose a little bit because it's okay to let loose when we're praising uh, Jesus. So that's number two, encourage them. Number three is to use scripture. Now this has to be used appropriately and it depends on how much time you have between songs. But uh, for example, you could use Psalms 98. If you're not sure how to give encouragement between songs, uh, you could just use uh, Psalms 98 as, as a foundation. Shout to the Lord all the earth, break out in praise, and sing for joy. Um, you can just kind of work that in there very naturally, and it's scripture, so it's going to be uh, you know, packed with punch, uh, and, and it's effective. So use scripture, uh, but make sure that it's brief and not too long, otherwise you could break the flow. So that's number three, use scripture. Number four is to tell a relevant story. Now again, this may, may or may not work depending on, 
um, how you're getting from one song to the next. But I saw Meredith Andrews uh, do this in concert. And uh, granted, it was, it was concert, it wasn't a church service. But she would uh, sing a song or two and then she'd tell some sort of a story that would uh, be maybe a, an explanation behind the, the next upcoming song or it would be a story that, that illustrated the concept that the next song would talk about. So she told re relevant stories uh, to, to make the point of the song and it was very helpful and done very well but again it, it, it does take time between songs and so uh, you don't want to do that between every single song if you only have maybe 30 minutes for your worship service and you've got five songs to do um, it, it, you know, so, may, so maybe between between two songs towards the end you can tell a story that that has meaning and, in, and impact uh, on the next song so number four tell a relevant story and number five explain or clarify a song now I'm not saying break down and start going line by line through a song what it means but maybe there's a song that um, has a concept that's or, or a lyric that's not readily clear as to what it means and, and sometimes you just have to explain it a little bit or maybe there's a really a key point in that song that you want to make sure they understand and you can you can mention it briefly as you move into the song I've done that a few times and it's worked rather well because it helps drive that point home on what could be a vague lyric now it makes sense now it has impact and meaning because I took the time just a minute to explain it so uh, help explain or clarify a lyric or the meaning of a song so those are my five ideas on what you can say between songs when you're leading worship. We're not quite done yet, but let's recap real fast. So number one is worship. Number two is give encouragement. Number three is use scripture. Number four, tell a story. And number five, explain or clarify a song. Now, when you're moving from one to the other or you're considering what you're gonna do, prepare ahead of time. Think about what you're going to say before the worship service starts so you're not uh, left stumbling and scrambling between songs. But above all, we want to make sure that we're in tune with the Spirit. If you're going to give encouragement, let the Spirit speak through you. Let the Spirit encourage the congregation through you. So be in tune with the Spirit and be aware of the atmosphere. Be, be uh, observant of what people are doing, whether they're engaged or not. Maybe they're having an emotional response and we want to say things that are going to keep the flow going, keep encouraging people and moving in the right direction. If, if you're in a more somber song set, telling a humorous story isn't appropriate. So we want to be aware of you know the environment and what's going on around us. And as I said, keep the flow going. Make sure your transitions are good. And it's going to take time, it's going to take practice and that is okay, but uh, just Keep it, keep it real easy when you first start out. I would say always worship and always encourage, but maybe choose ahead of time one scripture to slip in there or one little story to slip in there. Or if you know you're going to be doing a song that has a confusing lyric, take just a moment and know ahead of time, okay, I need to stop and explain this. And don't don't kill the band. Don't kill the whole, <laughs> don't, don't kill everything. Just say, stop, wait, wait, we got to talk about this. Uh, keep the flow going smooth and natural and that's going to help build up that worship atmosphere and uh, really uh, invite in the presence of God. So those are my tips and tricks and strategies for what to say between songs when you are leading worship. And I almost forgot, um, if you're using multi-tracks especially, make sure your sound engineer is on the same page that you are. So let them know, hey, between song three and four, I'm going to I'm going to pause for a moment and, and say something. So give them a heads up. Let them know ahead of time that you plan on taking a little break or you need a moment to do something. Uh, but just let them know ahead of time or maybe um, have a series of, of hand signals ready so they know, okay, got to stop or let's, let's go. Give them some sort of cue so they don't just hit the play button before you're done and away you go and missed opportunities afoot. So make sure your sound engineer is on the same page as you or there will be trouble in River City. 
So what do you say between songs when you're leading worship? I'd love to hear your feedback and get your ideas. I always love hearing good new ideas. Uh, leave them down below in the comments section. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this video, if you found it uh, helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, give us a thumbs up and uh, share it with a friend or another worship leader who might benefit from this. I greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time inside my next video. Take care. God bless.